Welcome to uh, our deep dive into the Falcon Lake incident. Oh, yeah. One of the most uh, debated events in UFO history. It's a good one. You wanted to know why this case from 1967 still has people talking. Mm -hmm. And trust me, once we unpack the details, yeah. you'll see why it's not your average close encounter story. It's not your average everyday encounter. No. Not at all. Um, what makes the Falcon Lake incident so compelling is the level of detail we have to work with. Right. It wasn't a fleeting glimpse from miles away. Right. But a prolonged encounter with vivid descriptions and even more intriguingly, yeah. physical evidence. Exactly. Um, and it happened to Stefan Michalak, an yeah. experienced outdoorsman and amateur prospector. Mm. That's not insignificant, right? Someone familiar with the wilderness, not prone to flights of fancy. No, not at all. Right. Michalak's background definitely lends a degree of credibility to his account. Right. It makes you consider the possibility he knew what he was seeing, or at least knew when something wasn't quite right. On May 20th, 1967, he was out on a solo prospecting trip near Falcon Lake in Manitoba. Oh, okay. A notoriously isolated area. Uh -huh. Can you picture it? Mm -hmm. Just your tools, the, the vast wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. And then boom. Ooh. Two OU cigar shaped objects descend from the sky. Oh, wow. Talk about ruining a peaceful day in nature. I was going to say, right. Most UFO reports I've come across involve a single object. Yeah. So the fact that Mikulak observed two is immediately intriguing. Yeah, that is interesting. Yeah. It makes you wonder what he must have been thinking in that moment. It does make you wonder what he was thinking. Yeah. But instead of hightailing it out of there, right. he approached cautiously. Wow. One of the objects actually landed nearby. Really? And Mikulak, in true prospector fashion, decided to investigate. Well, somebody's got to get to the bottom of things, right? Exactly. I have to admit, curiosity would be getting the better of me at this point. <laughs> oh, for sure. What did he find when he got up close? He described a smooth metallic object about 35 feet in diameter with no visible seams or markings. Okay. There was a central panel that seemed to be venting hot gas. Okay. Emanating a red glow and a distinct whirring sound. Wow. Michael Ike even tried to communicate with the object, calling out in several languages. So he's thinking, okay, maybe they didn't catch my English. Right. It's fascinating how even in such a bizarre situation, people try to rationalize and react. It's a testament to our innate desire to understand the unknown, yeah. to impose order on the unexpected. Right. But in this case, the unknown wasn't quite done with Michael Ike yet. Oh, no. As he reached out to touch the object. Oh. Possibly out of sheer curiosity. Yeah. The encounter took a dramatic and terrifying turn. This is where it goes from a curious sighting to something straight out of a sci-fi thriller. Yes. Am I right? You could say that the, oh. the venting gas suddenly intensified, becoming this blast of intensely hot air that actually set Michael Ike's shirt on fire. Oh my gosh. Now, this wasn't just some warm breeze. Right. The man was getting scorched. Talk about a rude awakening. Yeah. What did he do? Instinct took over. Okay. He tore off his burning clothing and backed away from the object as quickly as he could. Okay. And if that wasn't strange enough, he then observed the object change color. What? From red to gray while emitting a piercing whistling sound. No way. Just as he was gathering himself, the object released another blast. Ah. Oh, no. This one forceful enough to knock him to the ground. So now we're not just talking about burns, we're talking about some kind of force knocking him down. Correct. This is where the physical evidence starts to play a crucial role, right? Absolutely. Yeah. The blast left Mikulak with strange burn marks on his chest and stomach. Oh, wow. These marks, along with his detailed account, became central to the entire Falcon Lake incident investigation. It's not just a story anymore. It's a mystery with tangible clues. Right. Speaking of the investigation, how did the authorities react to Mikulak's claims? Yeah. He wasn't exactly strolling into the police station with a simple story. No, not at all. Right. You're right. And that's what makes what happened next so interesting. Okay. The RCMP, to their credit, took him seriously enough to investigate. Really? They didn't just brush him off as some prospector who had a little too much sun. It makes you wonder what... Was it about his story or demeanor that convinced them to look deeper? I think it was a combination of factors. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Ack's credibility as an experienced outdoorsman, the sheer strangeness of his story, and most importantly, the physical evidence he presented. Right. He willingly showed the authorities the unusual burn marks on his body. Those burn marks become a crucial piece of the puzzle, don't they? They ground the story in something tangible. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Exactly. And remember how I mentioned the RCMP found evidence of 
burn marks on the ground and elevated radiation levels at the site. Right. That completely changes the game. It's one thing to have a compelling witness, but physical traces like that add a whole other layer of intrigue to the Falcon Lake incident. What yeah. exactly did they find? At the location Michael Ack identified, they found unusual scorch marks on the rocks and vegetation consistent with his description of the object's landing site. Wow. Even more curious when they measured radiation levels in the area. Okay. They were significantly higher than normal. You have to wonder what went through the minds of those investigators when they got those readings back. Yeah, it's like something straight out of an X-Files episode. Right. But this was real life, and for those investigators, it shifted the case from a possible hoax or misidentification to something truly unexplained. Okay, but high radiation levels alone don't automatically equal alien spacecraft. I'm sure there are other explanations they must have explored, right? Oh, of course. Investigators looked into the usual suspects' experimental aircraft weather phenomena, even the possibility that Michael had stumbled upon a secret military testing site. Right. Some people even speculated that he might have encountered some kind of unusual geological event. Like some sort of localized geyser or a strange electromagnetic anomaly. Exactly. The problem was, None of these explanations could fully account for the combination of Michael Ike's detailed testimony and the physical evidence found at the scene. So we're left with this frustratingly compelling but incomplete picture. The RCMP, despite their efforts, couldn't definitively link the unusual physical traces to Michael Ike's UFO encounter. That's the enduring mystery of the Falcon Lake incident, isn't it? Right. It's a case where you can't definitively say yes or no to the UFO question. Right there are valid arguments to be made on both sides. But even if we set aside the question of extraterrestrial visitation for a moment, we still have Stefan Miklak and his very real experience to consider. This wasn't just a fleeting glimpse. The encounter had a lasting impact on his life. Didn't he experience some pretty intense after effects? You did. And those lingering health problems add yet another layer of complexity to the case. This is the part that always gets to me, the human side of the story. He goes on a prospecting trip and ends up entangled in this bizarre event that continues to affect him long after the actual encounter. What kind of symptoms did he experience? Well, immediately after the event, he was hit with a wave of physical ailments. We're talking nausea, vomiting, headaches, the works. It was like his body had been through some kind of trauma. Right. And those burn marks he received, they didn't heal like normal burns. They were slow to heal and left unusual scarring. Didn't they also have a strange grid-like pattern to them? That's right. It wasn't just the location and severity of the burns that were unusual, but their very appearance. It's enough to make you wonder about what could have possibly caused such precise markings. It's those kinds of details that make the Falcon Lake incident so compelling yet so frustrating. It's almost like the more you learn, the more questions you have. You've hit the nail on the head. The Falcon Lake incident isn't just about a possible UFO encounter. It's about the enduring power of mystery. So with all this in mind, how do we even begin to reconcile the lack of definitive answers with the undeniable strangeness of the event? Mm. What's the takeaway for someone like me or for our listener who's trying to make sense of it all? That's a question that has captivated researchers and enthusiasts for decades. And it's one we'll explore as we continue our deep dives. All right, listeners, I can already tell that you're hooked on this story as much as we are, but we're just getting started. Stay with us as we unpack the lasting legacy of the Falcon Lake incident and what it tells us about our own fascination with the unknown. We've been digging deep into the Falcon Lake incident, and um, yeah. it seems like the more we uncover, the more enigmatic it becomes. It's very true. We've got a credible witness, physical evidence, lingering health problems. Right. And yet, no definitive answers. Yeah. It's no wonder this case continues to fascinate. Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think it really highlights the limits of our understanding. Yeah. You know, we, we live in a world where we're used to having explanations for things, scientific categories for everything we encounter. Right. But the Falcon Lake incident resists those neat classifications. Right. And that's precisely what makes it so captivating. It challenges us to confront the unknown, doesn't it? To accept that there might be things out there phenomena experiences that we can't easily explain with our current knowledge. Absolutely. And I think that's why the Falcon Lake incident has had such a lasting impact on our culture. Right. It's not just a UFO story. It's a story about the power of mystery, the allure of the unexplained. It's become a kind of modern myth, hasn't it? It really has. We see its echoes in movies, books, TV shows. It's woven into the fabric of our collective imagination. Absolutely. Think yeah. about it. The X-Files, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, 
even shows like Stranger Things. Right. They all tap into that same sense of wonder and apprehension that the Falcon Lake incident evokes. It makes you realize that these stories, whether we believe them literally or not, speak to something deeply human within us. Our curiosity, our fears, our desire to make sense of a vast and sometimes unpredictable universe. Yeah, our desire to make sense of things that don't necessarily make sense. And what's so fascinating about the Falcon Lake incident is that it refuses to be neatly categorized as pure fiction or undeniable fact. It occupies this intriguing space in between prompting debate and discussion, even decades later. So as we reach the end of our deep dive, what are we left with? What can we take away from this perplexing event, even without a neat resolution? Well, I think the most important takeaway is the importance of keeping an open mind. Yeah. The world is full of mysteries. And sometimes the most we can do is acknowledge their complexity, appreciate their strangeness, and keep asking questions. It's a good reminder that certainty isn't always attainable, is it? And that sometimes embracing the mystery is just as valuable as finding a definitive answer. Absolutely. The Falcon Lake incident challenges us to expand our understanding of what's possible, to be comfortable with ambiguity, and to approach the unknown with a sense of curiosity rather than fear. It's a case that reminds us that reality itself can be a lot stranger than fiction. That's very true. So the next time you're out under the night sky, take a moment to really look up and consider what else might be out there just beyond our current understanding. What other mysteries are waiting to be uncovered? Who knows, maybe one day we'll have the technology or the knowledge to shed new light on cases like the Falcon Lake incident. Yeah. But until then, it stands as a testament to the enduring power of mystery and the importance of questioning what we think we know. This deep dive has certainly given us all a lot to ponder. What about mm -hmm. you? What resonated most with you about the Falcon Lake incident? We'd love for you to continue this conversation with us. Share your thoughts on our website or find us on social media. Until next time, keep exploring the unknown.